Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm Bob the Booker and today it is that time of year. Uh, the Booker Prize long list for 2021 has just been released. Um, it's a very, very exciting time. I feel a weird acute kind of pressure um, for for me and my channel during this time because uh, I started in November last year and at that point that was sort of just towards the tail end of uh, Booker 2020 um, and now I feel like given the name in my title in the title of my journal I uh, <laughs> it's sort of incumbent on me to be involved in this but at the same time this is an incredibly exciting thing I love the Booker Prize and uh, it's so so exciting to see this um, I am coming to you sort of from I'm doing this in the morning after it's been announced it was announced um, at one minute past midnight uh, on what is technically today um, but feels like a very long time ago in some ways. I, I, I started watching Kieran's uh, live stream over at Katie Books um, and at about 11 o'clock was as great as his live stream is and was um, I knew I needed to step away because I was like right I need to get some sleep and be able to sort of do a video on it in the morning and and just sort of you know be a functioning adult and human in, in my daytime and in my day job um, I then slept five hours and I now have this weird sort of bouffant hair thing going so hi everyone uh, but really really exciting to see this Booker Prize long list come up and um, I'm gonna be talking a little bit through what they are I haven't read uh, many of them um, and I um, I don't know of some of them so I've kind of got like a very short kind of summary of some of them but what's really exciting is I think the, the exciting thing about book prizes generally is that you get introduced to loads of new books and often books that you wouldn't otherwise have reached out and found. Um, Shuggy Bain is a great example where although it's many people's cup of tea, it's a book that actually until it was long listed had kind of been flying under the radar, especially as, as it was a debut coming out during the pandemic. Um, but this is a really interesting list as well because it's got quite a few more established authors, but still books that I've just not heard of. Um, and also, when it comes to my predictions uh, that I made, you know, I made two separate prediction videos, one quite early in the year, um, uh, sort of April-ish, I think, and then another sort of not too long ago, just to kind of try and catch up. I got four right. And uh, it's, it's interesting because I think this list has thrown so many people off that four is weirdly like an OK number. I think I was, you know, last year's long list, I had read a grand total of one um, one book before the long list came out, um, which was Hilary Mantel, which was perhaps the most obvious one uh, on that long list. Um, this year, uh, I have also read four, but yeah, those are not actually necessarily the ones I predicted. Um, so let's get into it. So starting off uh, with the four that I predicted um, and was right on, which I'm still actually fairly surprised happened um the first was the one that's probably the the most you know the easiest prediction in some ways on the list Kazuo Shiguro's Clara and the Sun um all about an artificial um intelligence kind of this sort of artificial friend um kind of robot kind of character called Clara um and her kind of kind of watching this really kind of innocent and pure take on the world around her so sort of what does a human world look like if you are programmed to sort of be fairly logical about everything you know what kinds of myths and, and legends do you tell yourself or make up for yourself to explain the world around you um so i think it's really interesting again i get why a lot of people don't necessarily love it um but this was the book you know it was probably going to make the list or at least we knew that it would be up for consideration because Shigeru as a previous winner is automatically, uh, his book is automatically allowed to be submitted um, and normally publishers are only allowed a, a capped number so it makes sense that that you know a, a book like a Shigeru's would kind of has a bit of prestige and can kind of cut through but we also already knew it would at least be seen by the judges so there we go. Um, yeah. Uh, next, um, a book that I am just finishing at the moment. I'm doing a buddy read on this with Sean over at Sean the Book Maniac, and that is The Promise by Damon Galgut. Um, I, uh, I'm really pleased that this book has made uh, the long list. I absolutely adore, I mean, I'm about, about two thirds roughly through at the moment. I absolutely adore this book so far. And um, it's been really interesting hearing Sean's um, views as well. Sean has been really enjoying it so far. The language is so gritty and tense and, and difficult and challenging and and powerful um 
the, the, the kind of central theme, like this promise that's at the heart of this book, is about um, essentially black land ownership um, in South Africa, um, and this sort of this woman who's been promised um, this house to sort of be left in a will, um, but that kind of seemingly does not seem to be happening, at least two thirds into the book, um, and. And as a result, we kind of get these sort of perspectives from this sort of white farmer family who you can kind of see how many of them are trying to hold on to the land and the power, sometimes because um, of their own sort of motivations to just have have that land and the kind of the memories they've got with it. Uh, but often race comes into it in a really staggering and, and shocking way. So it's a really interestingly done book um, so far. I mean, I absolutely adored the two Galgut, uh, sorry, the, the Galgut book I'd written, uh, I'd read before this, uh, which was In a Strange Room, uh, which is shortlisted for the 2010 Booker Prize, and in my opinion should have won. So I, I'm sort of rooting for this as a bit of an early favourite, um, but there are plenty of other books on the list that I've not yet checked out, so let's see. Two others um, that I somehow called right, <laughs> I don't know, mysterious thing, um, was, uh, where is it gone? Uh, uh, yeah, China. I don't know what I, I was looking there. Uh, China Room by Sanjeev Sahota. Um, so uh, he was shortlisted before for the Year of the Railways in 2015, and uh, China Room. You know, I'd kind of heard a little bit of love for it, but it's kind of, in some ways, flown a little bit under the radar before. So it's exciting to see this book get a little bit of love um, in terms of the long list. Um, and I think China Room sounds like it's got some really exciting things happening in terms of really digging into some kind of complex issues um so quite excited to see this one in there and the other one that i was um right about and in some ways this is probably less of a surprise um than some of the others but um is bewilderment by richard powers so richard powers was shortlisted for um his book uh, Overstory, uh, The Overstory in 2018 and he was also long listed for Orfeo in 2014 so he's you know no stranger to the prize he's won the Pulitzer I believe um, you know he's kind of a fairly well established author and so it's going to be exciting to kind of read this when it comes out in in September um, I've got an advanced copy so hopefully I'll be reading it soon um, but really exciting to see this book on the list I, I think it sounds like he's sort of He's an author I've not yet checked out, and I kind of feel like I probably will really like. I've been kind of very cautious and sort of hanging around, being like, well, maybe one day. I don't know what that, I don't know why I went into a Muppet voice there, but there we go. Uh, yeah, anyway. And then um, two other books um, on this uh, long list that I have read. Um, and I'll do some sort of separate bits talking about these as well, uh, I think. But um, Second Place by Rachel Cusk. So I um, I had an advanced copy of this and read it. Um, it is out now. Um, and that is um, a book all about uh, this sort of woman inviting this sort of painter to come in, this sort of artist to come in and be with them. But there's this, this really sort of tense and fraught relationship where um, the sort of, we're almost meant to kind of, almost knowingly see this kind of artistic temperament of this kind of, but in many ways uh on top of that kind of temperament and those sorts of things um we see how the characters are uh, there's a kind of wider discussion happening at the heart of the book about you know the the limits of of sort of patience and hospitality and and, and things like that um but also kind of these these sort of vast misunderstandings between um, between characters. So a really interesting book. Didn't fully work for me, um, but I did I did enjoy a good amount of it. So I think it is a really, really interesting book and i uh, intrigued to see it make the list. I put it in my original long list thing and then took it off thinking, nah, it hasn't really got a chance. I was wrong. Um, and the other book of these that I have read um, is No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. I have to admit, I'm quite surprised this one made it, but in some ways it makes a lot of sense actually, because I would have thought of all of the books that were on the Women's Prize long list and short list, I wouldn't have thought No One Is Talking About This would have been the one to also make it onto the booker, because, you know, most years there are a couple that are on both lists. And um, I'm surprised, I'm surprised it's this one, but at the same time, what, what, what why I'm not surprised, I guess, is a book like this is very sort of of the moment, very sort of zeitgeisty, and at the same time, because of that, um, 
I, I, so as I mentioned in my prediction video, to make it onto um, a long list, you need to have at least a couple of people really fighting for a book. Um, and sort of enough people really, really fighting for it and a few other people kind of going, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, right, well, let's give it a chance. Um, I, I hear what you're saying. And I think some of the other Women's Prize um, shortlisted books that were uh, that I thought would make potentially make this, so Transcendent Kingdom by Yad Yassi, um, or potentially Unsettled Ground by um, an author whose name I've forgotten, uh, Claire, 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 by Claire, um, that I kind of would have thought that these, um, in some ways, I would have thought that these books would have had, Claire Fuller, um, I would have thought that these books would have had more of a chance. Um, but thinking about it, those books, um, in many ways, come down to actually what one of the uh, judges said um, on this list. And that is, um, that is Archbishop Williams, who said, uh, most of us had one or two favoured novels that really struck us, but we couldn't persuade the others. Or sometimes there was a novel where we thought this was a really, really good, thoroughly satisfying novel, but does it quite break uh, new ground or change the horizon in the way we hope a booker winner would? Um, and then he goes on to say, when you think of what's won the booker over the years, you want something that puts down a slightly fresh marker. That's not to say you look for novelty for, novel uh, for its own sake. The, uh, the other thing about a book a winner is that it ought to be a book that people enjoy reading, called me old fashioned if you like. You don't want something that is so experimental as to be highly satisfying to the author and a few ultra sophisticated critics. You want something that will keep people turning the pages. And that's really interesting and a really useful insight, I think, to perhaps how this long list has been created. Because from what I've seen, a lot of these long, long listed books are sort of very readable, um, uh, uh, books and um, they're still challenging and still you know thought-provoking but they are quite readable but at the same time where there are books that are kind of a bit different they are they sort of seem to be marrying together those two things of being readable and accessible and being sort of challenging in some other way like it's a new idea it's formally quite challenging um but something kind of new and so in some ways that makes a lot of sense with someone like Sugar with Clara and the Sun which um, is very readable. It, it's probably, well, from the ones I've read so far, it's probably the easiest sort of quick read. You can kind of really flip through it. Um, and it's challenging in terms of some of its ideas. Uh, but, you know, I mean, for some people, it, I don't think it has gone far enough. And I see that. I, I get that. I, especially if you're someone who maybe reads a bit more sci-fi and fantasy. This book maybe doesn't go quite as far as others um, on that. Uh, and something like The Promise by Damon Galgut. Um, is an incredibly challenging bit of subject matter, but is a really, I mean, enjoyable is not the word, but it, it's the, the, the artistry of the language is incredible and makes you want to keep reading. So I, I, I think I, I see, I see that um, element of it there. Uh, but it's going to be very interesting to see what comes from that. And I think it's a really useful insight to see how for the judges, something like then no one is talking about this by Patricia Lockwood actually fits that because it's it's very readable but it's something very new in some ways it, it does quite a few interesting things with the idea of internet speak and and kind of being online um that i haven't really seen too too much so yeah an interesting interesting six so far and then for the other seven books these are all ones that i have not read and also did not predict. <laughs> uh, so these are the more unknown ones. Um, so let's go through them in, in sort of rough order. So A Passage North by Anuk Adud, um, Arud Pragasam uh, from Sri Lanka. Now um, this book uh, is about um, a man going to a funeral and it's sort of this sort of long passage that he's sort of taking to the north of the country. Um, I don't think we've seen too too many Sri Lankan authors on the list before. I mean I don't think he's the first but probably one of the earliest, I'd imagine. Um, you know, one of the one of the very few. Sorry, I mean. Um, so yeah, and um, and this this sounds like a really interesting book. Um, Eric Carl Anderson speaks about this book being sort of the the, the the author is a philosopher as well, and it's kind of quite not sort of meandering. It's kind of more. It's not really plot based, I should say. And so this book seems to kind of follow this idea of of kind of his sort of internal reflections, which really sounds right up my alley, actually. I love books of people sort of having uh, long 
sort of detailed thought patterns inside their heads and kind of working things out and, and what have you. So I'm really excited about this. Um, next is The Sweetness of Water by Nathan Harris. Um, so this is an, a US author and uh, this sort of is largely around sort of following the uh, US Civil War um, and sort of various uh, various topics around race, sexuality and gender in the US, um, which sounds really quite exciting actually. Um, it's interesting, a few people have kind of commented that, um, I mean not to say you can only have one book by an author discussing a sort of certain topic, but often if books are seen to have overlapping themes or sort of similar stories or, or timing or time frames often one of them kind of gets cancelled out and um people have sort of been commenting a little bit about uh, the sweetness of water perhaps sort of cancelling out a book like the prophets by robert jones jr um which i was certain was going to be on this list i of i thought basically clara and the son and the prophets were pretty much the only two dead certs in this one so really quite surprised uh, but this book not to take away from it this book sounds really good um it's not one i'd heard of i don't think at all um but people who have read it seem to have really taken to it so uh excited to check this out and again that's a really exciting thing about a prize right is to be introduced to books that you probably otherwise wouldn't have checked out um and to give them a go even if you hate them <laughs> just to to give them a bit of a, a look in um next up is um an, the second south african author on the list uh, um you know as well as uh, galgut which is an island by karen jennings um and this sounds really interesting so this is um uh, there's a sort of lighthouse keeper and there's a, a sort of immigrant who washes up on shore and it's sort of about their two, the, the sort of relationship between these two characters. And I think that sounds quite interesting itself. Again, a book I'd completely not heard of. Um, a really short book as well, it looks like. Uh, and I'm just quite excited by this one. I, I'm partly probably because it's short. <laughs> My, uh, I've got about like 15 to 20 books on loan from the library that I've been meaning to give back for the longest time. And I was like, right, July is gonna be the month that I read through them all so I can give them back to the library and then just be able to focus on the book a long list. What did I do? Not that. So, <laughs> uh, that would be fun. Um, but yeah, excited to to kind of give this one a, a, a look in as well. I think it sounds really interesting. Um, particularly, I think that there is something sort of so striking about that idea of being on a sort of an island where you've kind of got this almost artificial, not artificial, this kind of scenario where these two characters are forced together because of the circumstance because they're the two the only two on an island that almost sounds like you know what a lot of plays do in kind of terms of trapping characters on stage in some kind of scenario um because i think you get some of the most interesting um insights and, and moments when those things happen because if two people are forced to have to get on um, or forced to kind of interact with each other they kind of adapt in very interesting ways so, so really excited um, about this Next up is A Town Called Solace by Mary Lawson, who is, I believe, the only, well, one of only two Canadians on the list. So Rachel Cusk is British and Canadian. Um, it's interesting, Canadian authors, I feel like, haven't really had um, as big a showing. Um, I think early into the book, there were a fair few more Canadians. Um, but it's interesting, I don't think we've had, I mean, I guess we had Margaret Atwood, but then I guess the Canadian sort of slot as it were is almost always seems to be Margaret Atwood and obviously there's a much broader range of Canadian literature outside of Margaret Atwood as wonderful as she is um and yeah also no Australians uh interestingly on this list at all um and you know, I don't necessarily know too too many Australian authors or Australian books from this year but it just always seems quite striking that like that's quite a substantial um sort of area for literature um and it, it it seems like we haven't really had that many um, books from there in the last few years. Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, a Town Called Solace. So this uh, seems like a really exciting uh, story. And Mary Lawson, I believe, is a sort of slightly more established author, I want to say. So um, this is... Uh, yeah, so this book is... Sorry, I'm just quickly finding some notes on this. Uh, so this book is about... Um, set, set in northern Ontario in 1972, and an eight-year-old... Um, someone's eight-year-old sister goes missing um books like this sometimes are a bit hit and miss for me sometimes i absolutely adore books about kind of people going missing because i think they're done really cleverly and really well sometimes not less so this sounds actually from from what i've heard and a bit of the buzz around it that it's a really interesting one um i've heard that a fair few people as well have really loved 
um, sort of other work by Mary Lawson. So hopefully, we shall see. This should be quite exciting. Um, so yeah, really uh, looking forward to checking this out, especially um, alongside this next one, which um, I'm really keen on, uh, which is The Fortune Men by Nadifa Muhammad. Um, and she is a British and Somali author, and she, in this book, is writing about um, uh, sort of racial violence um, that happens uh, around um, a dock in Tiger Bay in Cardiff. Um, and this ticks so, so many boxes for me in terms of why I think I'm interested in this from the jump. Not only because I used to live in Cardiff and it's one of my favourite cities in the world, I just, I just love it there, it's, it's brilliant, um, but also that kind of, this is a sort of story that we don't often get. So there's a fairly large um, Somali population in both Cardiff and nearby Bristol. Um, and they've, you know, the Somali population in both cities have, have just have this really rich and interesting history. Um, a lot around that came up during Black Lives Matter protests last year, um, and particularly around um, the Edward, um, God, what's his surname now? Colson? Col the, the, the statue that was torn down in Bristol and um, uh, the, the kind of when all of that was happening there was a really big discussion about how for example the Somali population and other sort of migrant groups but the, the Somali population in in, in Bristol was um, you know ha had just been this really really vibrant but also really under um, sort of really marginalised, really underprivileged group for, for quite a while. Um, and sort of, they'd, you know, sort of been thriving under sort of really difficult circumstances. So I'm really keen to see um, this play out um, in a city I know somewhat well, um, and particularly sort of set in the 1950s, again, with this sort of working class dock kind of dock worker community. This sounds fascinating and I'm really, really keen on this. So um, yeah, really eager to check this out and um, excited to see. Um, and that just takes us to the final two from this list. So those are Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead and Light Perpetual by Francis uh, Spufford. So first, Great Circle. Um, so this book is quite a long one. It's about 600 pages. Um, and this is also where I now have lost where my notes are on this. There we go. Uh, so uh, this is about a female aviator who disappears in 1950 while attempting to fly around the world. Um, so this sounds really quite exciting. Um, I think the longest book on this long list, um, so will be exciting. I think a book that's 600 pages has to often earn that, those 600 pages, but I think I've, I've heard that it's quite an interesting one, um, so I'm quite excited to check this out. I think it's going to be interesting to see as well um, which of these make the shortlist, because often what happens, you know, is people kind of read all these books or that they might have one or two left in the long list and then the shortlist rolls around and those sort of get parked. My aim is to try and read all of them before the shortlist comes out. Um, but we'll see, I've, especially with the massive amount of library books I need to give back. So, and I've only read four of these. So I have a whole nine of these to try and get through plus everything else in the next month. Hmm, this is maybe not gonna happen, we'll see. Um, but, uh, this sounds really, really exciting, and uh, yeah, I, I really want to check it out. And finally, um, Light Perpetual by Francis Bufford. Now, I had heard of this, uh, mostly because I just sort of saw it cropping up on like Libby and and, and Borobox, um, and didn't really think too, too much of it. I'd heard it a little bit um, when it came out, but hadn't really spent too much time um, thinking about it. And so this this is the idea of, uh, so apparently Francis Bufford got this idea, walking around and seeing a sort of a monument to people who had sort of died from a bomb and this is sort of an alternate sort of history and sort of um uh, sort of thinking of what would have happened if this bomb that, that sort of killed five people hadn't killed them what what lives would they have gone on to live if that hadn't been the case um and so as as a result what we then see so i've heard is uh the kind of the lives of these characters as if you know this bomb never happened or as if they'd managed to escape it and um this is kind of quite exciting to think of actually what you know there are so many <clears throat> kind of like oh what's that that train <laughs> that train film that you know you know the one right is it called changing places no it's chain it'll come to me um but the idea of um you know just a split second decision could absolutely alter the course of your life the idea that you might Get on a train or not get on a train in this magical film that i can't remember the name of um 
and um, that that kind of idea that actually you know people who for example were due to be on one of the planes that that kind of um, was hijacked during 9 11 people kind of were saying like oh actually i woke up late and missed my plane um you know those sorts of moments where actually so so much could have changed and so i'm excited to see what comes up um from this book but Pulling all of these together, this is a really different long list to not only what most people were expecting, which is exciting because I guess it means that it's not the usual. I mean, in, I still feel bad for the booker because they can't really win either way. If it's a book, if it's a list full of books that nobody's heard of, everyone's like, well, what is this nonsense? I've never heard of these. You've missed out some perfectly great books. Um, they can only choose 13. That's going to happen. Um, but also if they choose all the kind of well-established ones, then it's seen as very established, like a very much the, the establishment. It's sort of, uh, you know, it's too predictable. It's, you know, literary snobbery, whatever. So I see how they can't really win. But I think this is very exciting. This is a long list. Not really that many people I don't think would have gotten many of and if they had i mean well done you um but that's the interesting thing about the booker it's a it's just it's an ever moving feast and beast and it's very you know you can't really ever you can't really ever get it fully right because it's going to be five people being judges um often pe five people from really different backgrounds and very different reading backgrounds who um kind of come together to kind of choose the top 13 books of about 160 that get submitted so you know there are going to be some some interesting ones but i think this is very exciting to see so many new ones but really different from last year last year seemingly was the year of the debut uh, with about, i think it was seven or eight of the 13 were debuts um this year i think it's two um this year as well the gender balance is sort of i think seven men six women um there are, as well as, you know, some sort of big names on this list, like um, uh, Ishiguro, um, Sohota has been shortlisted before, as has uh, Damon Galgut, um, and I believe there's somebody else who was long listed before. Um, so, you know, some kind of returners, uh, whereas last year there weren't quite as many. And yeah, it just seems like quite an exciting list. It's not as American as previous lists have been. I think there are only t four, four Americans, which I think last year, again, I think it was seven or eight. Um, so this is a very, very different list. And I think that also perhaps reflects publishing at the moment in the sense that I think last year with lockdown kind of coming in, there were lots of books that were either too far into the publication process to be stopped um, or kind of still sort of came out and had sort of different releases this year you know many books that were held off last year are now being released this year and so there are a few books that otherwise probably would have been in last year's long list um or maybe would have been overlooked last year that are in this one and are now being taken up so an exciting time for all um but um i'm super excited i think um Carl, uh, Carl, Eric Carl Anderson um in his uh in his roundup did um his own sort of mini prediction for who he would like to win so far and I have to admit in I mean in fairly typical fashion I think we I normally agree with him on quite a few things um I would also say that I think The Promise by Damon Galgut is an early good contender I think this at least deserves to be on the short list um I mean as I said I'm about two-thirds through but from my um from the buddy read I'm doing with Sean the book maniac we're both in love with this book and just think it does so many things so well and I would really love to see Galgut get even more recognition for his incredible writing. He's so, so good. Um, and there, I, as I'm reading this book, I just keep on taking pictures of pages and just being like, this, this line is incredible, this whole paragraph is incredible, this page is incredible. Um, brilliant. Brilliant stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if, um, if, where is he, if Shigeru doesn't make the shortlist. I think from the sounds of things, there are a few other books that might kind of edge it out, but you never know. Um, it, might, it might go on to win. Um, anyway, um, I'd love to know your thoughts. I'm really excited to read these uh, long listed books. Um, I also urge you to really go and check out Eric Carl Anderson's video over the Lonesome Reader, um, where he does his run through. I also urge you to check out um, Kieran over at KD Books, his live stream last night. I could only join about an hour of it because I then needed to go to bed. Um, but the, the first hour I saw was just like, so, you know, there's that whole kind of matrix of, 
you know, chaotic good, chaotic neutral. I feel like Kieran is like chaotic brilliant. <laughs> just like, just chaotic, uh, but like just wonderful. I love that man. His live stream was just, I, I don't know how you can kind of, literally leading up to an announcement of a book prize, you can ha keep everyone hyped and interested for about two hours. Uh, but if anyone is there to do it, it's Kieran. Um, so I really urge you to go check that out. Um, but apart from that, I hope you enjoy the long list. I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, are there any books that you think uh, are sorely missing from this list? And why is it The Prophets? Uh, <laughs> because really, where is that book on this long list? I'm, I'm honestly, I'm so surprised The Prophets is not here. Um, I'm gutted that Detransition Baby didn't make it. Um, I kind of see why perhaps, but... I loved it and I just think it's a, it's wonderful and I'd really love to see it there. Kind of surprised Natasha Brown's assembly wasn't there because that had quite a bit of buzz and, and love behind it. Um, I still want to go and check that out. Um, but yeah, let's see. Um, I hope, uh, and Sarah Gil Martin's Dinner Party of Tragedy, which I will keep banging on about for the entire year and years to come. Um, I think that book deserves the world um, and I'm gutted it's not here because I think it would have really benefited from a bit of love on the long list, um, which comes out in September. Anyway. Would love to know your thoughts. What books would you love to see? What books do you think are missing? And take care and speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.